good evening, everybody. Welcome along to this um, later than later than planned <laughs> live reaction pod to Rangers' um, second leg, second round, second leg Champions League game uh, in Lisbon against Benfica. Unfortunately, we succumbed to a three-one extra time defeat. Uh, with me tonight, I've got Brian. Brian, disappointing, uh, disappointing result. Yeah, very, very, I didn't feel. I mean, over, over the piece of the night, well, the 120 minutes, you could say Benfica was by far the better team, but I don't feel it was as much as as that. Um, I it's it's a it's a it's a sore one to take, but it's a a lesson learned at this level that you know, it, although scoring is important, it's just as important to keep it tight at the back. And I'm afraid over the piece we've lost five, so. It's it's a it's a, it was a step up in level compared to what we play during the league, but it's it's valuable experience. There's a lot of young girls playing, and it's their first crack at the Champions League, so we can't really be too critical of them. You know, it's as you I think we said just at the start, it's getting to this stage at the first crack where we expect to do probably not. So it's it's disappointing, but it's 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 a major step forward for them. Yeah, it is. I mean, uh, good evening to everybody in the comments. Good evening again, Ross. Uh, as Wendy, as Wendy said in the comment apart there earlier, um, it's just just the way it goes. All the way to the end, yeah. should have been a penalty towards the end, but we'll, we'll get we'll get to that as we unpack mm-hmm. the game. Um, as you said, the better the better the better team won the tie, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. I don't like saying that from teams beat Rangers, but I think the better team did win the tie. Mm-hmm. We were hanging in a bit, particularly in that first half. Um, they were, I mean, why they were three or four up at half time mystifies me. I mean, a couple of good saves from Vicky Essen, mm-hmm. uh, the one that rattled off the bar as well. You know, there's a few, a bit of Keystone Cops defending. I mean, really, we were only up the park. I think the 44th minute was the first time we bothered their keeper, the free yeah. kick right on half time. Um, but we hung in there, and that's how, that's how football works. Mm-hmm. We hung in there, um, made a couple of changes early second half. Lizzie Arnold went off. Lizzie was always was. All, I was actually surprised to see Lizzie start because normally mm-hmm. she comes off the bench. Yeah, uh, but Emma Watson coming on seemed to change the game for us. Absolutely, I think you said in the, when we were chatting about it uh, mid mid match. I mean, Emma Emma's energy when she came on made, made a big difference, and she she fairly brought the team up the park, and she fairly went up and gave us uh, a bit of. Nous and getting forward, she dragged the team up the park, which was a problem for us because we were very, thought we were very deep at times. But she, you know, her energy and running with the ball, she got us up the park, and you know, she gave the the defence a bit of respite and gave us an actual chance of attacking the 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 Benfica goal. So it was it was a big change, but it was a, a brave change, but it was actually the right change. Yeah, right. At this point, I want to I want to touch on on John Jameson's uh, comment because he's made a couple of these comments tonight. Um, what you've got to remember, John, is it's the first time they've been in the Champions League. Um, they weren't even expected to get this far. I mean, that wee mini tournament they played in the first round, they weren't expected to win the first game, they never win the second game. I mean, beating Pouk Salonica 4-0 on their own park was a hell of a result. Mm-hmm. Taking Benfica to extra time. I mean, OK, Benfica's only been on the go since 2017. But as they, as they showed you on um, BBC Alba at half-time, they've won a plethora of trophies in their time there. Um in Portuguese, in Portugal, they've they've got progressively better in the Champions League. I mean, they are a Champions League level team in the women's game. Mm-hmm. It's, their, it's their first crack at it, and we've taken them all the way. And, and you could argue it should have got it should have gone to penalties because that was I think that was a penalty towards the end for us. So, John, you're entitled to your opinion, and we'd really appreciate you watching and putting in your uh, putting in your comments. But I'm afraid I disagree with you. But you are entitled to your opinion. Here's hope. Mm-hmm. Who's hoping that the Rangers ladies team do get do get better? Um, it would have been nice for them to get into the group stages, but unfortunately they didn't. Um, but we'll get back to the, we'll get back to the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to fire us fire us coming up here at the end of that one. There we go. Uh, can't really can't really argue that. You no. see Emma Watson. Emma Watson came on. She did make a difference. It was a bit of a out ball, but they they seem to they seem to shot their ball. with ten minutes to go, they seem to be run run out of ideas. <coughs> very, me, very, mu- very much. I very much so. Well, um, they were they were getting leggy, and I think they were, as you say, they, they had so many chances in the first half. They're probably, you know, just trying to hang on at the end, and we we managed to get the 
a goal from a, a set piece corner and uh, Emma Watson managed to prod it in. There was a bit of a, a melee, a bit of a stramash in the, in the box, and she just prodded it into the corner. So I mean, it was uh, yeah. As, as CGM's already said, you know, and we both said, you know, Benfica were by far the better team, but just for endeavour and effort, I think they deserved, you know, at least a, a crack at extra time. And yeah, it was. I'm being biased probably a little bit, but. I just felt for their endeavour and their effort, they deserved something, and I, I felt extra time was, pulled. yeah, a little bit biased, but yeah, I felt they deserved it just for their effort and their endeavour. I think, I think for me, taking the blue tint the specs off, they really didn't deserve extra time. But that's how football. No, goes. I know. You know, I, know. I mean, I mean, they missed a heart load of chances, and then we ran at the park. We yeah. got a chance and we scored it. Um, I mean, the way the way the, uh, the the Portuguese TV feed was, I thought they disallowed it. Mm-hmm. Because obviously it got stabbed in, we celebrated. I'm jumping about my living room like an idiot. Dogs wondering what was going on. Um, <laughs> and then I look up, they're showing a replay. Rangers have, Rangers have already tweeted goal. They then show you the the line, the, 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 the assistant referee, I almost called it a linesman there, the assistant referee. And that usually means that they've made a decision. Mm-hmm. And I've looked at the graphic, but the graphic was wrong earlier on in the half. And I'm thinking, well, have they given the goal? Because you didn't see them kick off again. <laughs> no, nah, nah. I'm saying, have they given the goal? Have they not given the goal? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And luckily, they'd given the goal, and we got we got to extra time, and unfortunately, start the extra time. The one thing you don't want to do in the first couple of minutes is to lose a goal, and the one thing we did do is lose a goal. It was almost identical to one of the goals Benfica got last week at Ibrox. Yeah, and just to touch on it. Uh, Nick Doc had a shot from God knows how far out, and it you know just top, scuffed the top of the net. So, you know there was a there was a half chance there just to even get the the um, a second just before the end of the game. So it, the, Nick Doc nearly just had a pile driver from about thirty odd yards and um, got a second. So you know just before the end of the game we could have actually won the game. So, but as you say, right at the start of the second half, as you say, just keep it tight for the first few minutes, but. That girl we spoke about it on the first leg, Wolf uh, Chloe Lacasse. La- La- um, yeah, she's seems to be the she she caused us problems in the first leg down the down her side the whole game, and she was doing it again tonight. She's extremely quick, and yeah, just took the full back to the cleaners, and it's 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 hard to hard to criticise the goalie because she got beat at near post, but it's yeah. It's, a good finish at the same time. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you want to be, if you want to be hypercritical, as I say, it was exactly the same goal as Vicky Essen lost last week in the same position. I mean, I felt I felt a bit for Rachel McLaughlin at right back because I mean they, they obviously targeted her tonight. You know, I mean, they even yeah. commented on that during the um, during the commentary that you know it looked like Brogan Hayden was playing a bit further back to try and kind of stifle them coming forward, which mm-hmm. stifled Brogan's effectiveness. But having said that, Brogan was good going forward. And yeah. it always mystifies me why they take her off. I know she's a wee bit lightweight, but she's the only real pace in that team. You know, so it always mystifies me why she gets taken off. There's obviously reasons for it that that are beyond my comprehension because I'm mm-hmm. I'm just an old man that shouts at clouds all the time. You know? <laughs> um, and it almost it almost worked because we we got the we got the goal just before, just before the end of the game, mm-hmm. two weeks into extra time, and it's very very disappointing um, to pick up on the comment there from from. Uh, SDM, Catherine Hill was a big, big miss tonight. She was also a big miss last week because mm-hmm. Tessel, Tessel Medag is, is having a great a great attempt at being a centre-back, but she's never a centre-back in your life. She's played well, no. she's blocked a few shots. She's not to blame for any of the goals that were lost, but she's not she's not a centre-back. No. And because she's in there, we're missing, her, we're missing her ability in the middle of the park. So Absolutely. they were affected two ways with, with Tessel playing back there, you know. And I would think under normal circumstances, uh, Martinez wouldn't be, wouldn't be playing in a game like that either. No, certainly not. Certainly not the full two games and the extra time. Mm. She certainly looks a bit like a rabbit in headlights. She comes out and makes some fairly strange decisions for me. Mm. So having having my two main centre halves injured didn't really help. No, no. It's 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 definitely. I mean, <laughs> it's the same. You know, it's probably the same sort of problem that. Uh, hit the men's team last year. We lost all our strikers at one yeah. go, and it seems to be the the ladies have lost all their centre halves at one go. It's just one of these things in football, unfortunately. But you know, as you say, Tess has a a a, a centre defensive midfielder all day long. 
she'll do a job for you in the, the uh, uh, centre defence, but a stand in only. And yeah. yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame. You know, she's having to play there, but needs must. There's nobody else. Injuries have you know hit us. I think Davidson's injured as well. You know, so there's there's another one that's injured. So yeah. you know, it's it's just, it's just a shame. But as you say, needs must. And they've they did to be, you know they've done they've done well with the the positions they've been asked to play. Let's put it that way. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. I mean, with uh, with, with Hannah Davison and Kath Hill, Kath Hill were, were, were two kind of recognised centre halves both missing. You know, it was a bit, you know, it was a bit of a bit of a shame that neither the two of them could could have played. But, but I mean, don't get me wrong, um, Martin, Martinez and Medag did did okay because I mean that Benfica are a very 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 good side. Yeah. Um, obviously, we lost that goal to start the extra time. Poor goal to lose. Yeah, we still we still we, we dug in. Still made, still made a few chances. And with a couple of minutes to go, I'm thinking, well, you're going to get a chance because you always get a chance. Mm-hmm. And then Emma Watson get brought down in the box. Penalty kick for me. Absolutely. I mean, I, I watched the... I, I, when I first seen it, I thought it was a penalty. And then I seen the replay. It was definitely a penalty because the girl, girl got nowhere near the ball. And I was just waiting for the whistle. And I'm, I'm still waiting for it, but it's... Yeah, it's, it's and then of course what happens? Wolf well, they go straight up the park and catch us in the counter dark and score. Typical football. Yeah, yeah we got that whistle you were waiting for. But unfortunately, it was the signal. It was to, to signal the third goal for third goal on the night. Yeah, um, it was un- unfortunate, but you know it was um, mm-hmm. the way it goes. You know. Yeah. Um, it was at the end of the day. As far as I'm concerned, if you're if you're if you're chasing, if you're chasing a game, you're as well, you're as well losing another goal trying to get back into it, as yeah, you know, just 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 cashing in your chips and saying, "Well, that's it, job done." You know what I mean? It's you know, we're unlucky. We made more chances. I thought the girls did really, really well. They should be extremely proud of themselves. They just need to go on and win this league again. Then, absolutely. Um, and I, I, I firmly believe they've got the squad to do it. Um. It's just a it's just a case of getting these centre half centre half back fit. I think uh, I'm sure he said at the press conference last week that he was hoping one or two were close to getting back at, um, for the league starting after the Champions League. So hopefully he's going to get some good news on the injury front and get some of them back because big players and we need you know we need centre half. So we need Tessa playing in her comfortable position as well. So, it's very unfair asking somebody to play out of position for a period of time because you can do a job for maybe a game or two, but doing it for a, a long period is is asking an awful lot. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of getting them their players that these sent a half spark because they're they're going to be very pivotal in the season coming. Yeah, especially when playing about position, especially at that level. I mean, it's mm-hmm. you know it's it's one thing playing uh, playing Tesla Tesla mid get sent a half against Motherwell last Sunday. It's yeah. quite another thing playing against Benfica. I mean, there. They're, they're lightning quick. They're a really, they're a really good side. It's, it's, I mean, a friend of mine who was watching the game. He doesn't usually watch ladies football, but it was a Rangers team, so he watched it. And he messaged me and he said, "There's a golf in class," <laughs> and that looks very familiar because when we play in the Champions League, the first team, male first team, playing the Champions League this season, there's yeah. been a golf in class. Benfica was the same with, with the ladies team tonight. There is a golf in class, but it's to me, it's the same situation. It's, it's the men's first team's first go in the Champions League in twelve years. Mm-hmm. It's the ladies first ever go in the Champions League, and it takes time to adjust it because it's completely different. As I say, to playing like a like a Motherwell, Celtic, Glasgow City, whoever, to playing the likes of Benfica, it's a completely different mindset. It's a completely different environment. It's a, you know, it's just a, it's, it's a it's a different sport, really. Yeah, um, I, I th- you've just hit me on the head. I mean, when the when the ladies team plays, you say the Motherwells and the Hearts and all them <clears throat> out with obviously Celtic and Glasgow City, they're used to having a lot of the ball and, you know, dictating play and having miles more possession than the other team. And unfortunately, as you say, that they're they're up against far better teams like try to qualify for the well at this stage try to qualify for the Champions League. And as you say, it's almost role role reversed. It's at the Benfica that we're dictating all the time and we were having to dig in, you know. So yeah, it's it's difficult, but it's a big learning curve and I, I'll, I, I, they'll definitely get there, you know. If not next season, the season after, because they're building all the time, and we've seen it. Well, you know, they're 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 slowly building something, and it just takes time. And 
I, I firmly believe they'll get there within a couple of seasons, I think. Yeah, there was a comment earlier I'd like to just go back to. Um, nothing to do with the game, but it was um, we, we were talking about it with Martin before we came on um, about what the, what the budget actually is for the women's team. Now, I'm hoping that will come out in the accounts. I don't know how thorough the accounts will be when they, because they're, they're due out soon prior to the AGM. Um, you know, whether it'll break it down, what income, what, what budgets go where and what expenditure comes in from different, if it'll all just be lumped in as ticket revenue or will you get ladies ticket revenue, meal ticket or whatever. But it would be nice. I mean, I know Stuart Robertson said a couple of years ago at the AGM that they were, that they were throwing a vast sum or a, a decent sum of money at the ladies team. But it would be interesting to know what, exactly what that budget is because I know, having spoke to a couple of folk, a couple of friends of mine that go to most of the ladies games, um, that a couple of the players that have come, come, come to join us from, from abroad have come to us because we've offered them more money than some fairly big teams in Europe. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking there must, be a, there must be a fair old budget. And obviously for that, we're wanting a return. Absolutely, yeah. Um, as you say, we're, we're kind of guess we're throwing, sh sort of shooting in the dark here what the, the budget is. We don't really know. Um, all, as you say, all we've been told is they've, they've thrown a decent chunk of, of revenue at it and you know that's all. That's kind of all we've been given. So it would be interesting. Um, but it, as I say, as I said, as we've said before, Wolf, it's going to take a bit of time for them to get used to this sort of level because it's, um, you know, it's 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 far better teams we're playing. You know, we're not used to having sort of not. A, they're not used to having not a lot of the ball when they're playing. They're used to having a lot of the ball, but it's just the same as the men. The men have been used to having. A lot of the ball in the SPL, and then of course they play Champions League, and their backs to you know, you know, defending a lot and not having the ball. So it's just it's it's just taking it's just taking a bit of time. But you know, uh, there's 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 signs there that there's 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 definitely a team there that you could say there's progression, and as long as you can see progression, you don't mind that, as I I think. Yeah, I mean, as as, uh, as Ian Ross points out, the other European teams have been going for many years and will obviously be ahead of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of them have been going for a long, long time. Like Benfica, as we said earlier, they I think they, they started in 2017. Mm -hmm. and but they've, but they've been progressively improving. So we can only hope that we can progressively improve. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm delighted that we got as far as we did. I'd love, I'd love the ladies to get into the group stages. Mm -hmm. But I mean, even getting into the second round was was an achievement. The fact that they've had a home game in the Champions League with a new with a new system was fantastic. Yeah. The fact they played the home game at Ibrox was magnificent. The fact that because of the rabble community, we were able to watch it last Tuesday from the gantry was mm -hmm. something extra special. But for me, the biggest takeout from last week is the fact that three and a half thousand folk paid money to go and watch that game. Mm -hmm. You know that tells you there's an appetite for for the ladies' game. You know. Yeah. Um, and as I said last week, had the, had the home game been this week, I think they've got more than three and a half thousand because yeah. we're all choking to watch. I mean, even just looking at social media today, tonight, the amount of people that were commenting on the game on Twitter that were obviously watching it on BBC Alma mm -hmm. because it's a Rangers team to watch. We haven't seen Rangers for about a week and a half. You know what I mean? We yeah. don't play again on Saturday. A lot of guys can't go to the game because it's it's hearts. There's not a lot of tickets. Then we're at Liverpool again. There's not a lot of tickets. So it's another 10 days till we're back at Ibrox. Yeah. So had that game tonight, been at home, I would have expected maybe up as a five thousand at the game. Yeah, I think we, I think we said I think you said that at the the pre match uh, before the home leg, didn't you? Well, you know, if it was a home game, as in tonight, we'd have seen a far better crowd because obviously it was a few days since we've seen a Rangers team play. So, yeah, it's but as you say, three and a half thousand was a a, a decent sort of crowd to get, you know, for a for a, a ladies' Champions League game, um, these things obviously start very slowly and they build up a uh, sort of momentum. So it's just it's it's just going to take time. We can't you know sort of bash them too much. They've they've put in a lot of lot a lot of effort. Sorry, and you know as you said, Arsenal have been professional for God knows how long. Um, I think with the German teams as well, they've been professional for a long time. So it's going to take a bit of catching up, but they'll get. I, I believe they'll get there. Yeah, I think I think they'll get there. I mean, they could do with a bit more competition in Scotland, but that's nothing to do with us. You know, what I mean, no. that's just um, that's 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 other teams' doors. You know, 
that's to me that's where, where it's difficult games like tonight because you're not getting a lot of competition. But it's yeah. the same when, same when we when we go into Champions League when we're playing. Mm-hmm. Okay, this season, but but the the, the, main, the main's first team has been a bit of a been a bit been a bit up and down. But you know, you yeah. go back to go back to like the the nineties where we were sweeping we were, we were sweeping everything in front of us domestically. Went to Europe, couldn't couldn't raise the level because it's to raise the level. This is the same. They're, they're asking them to raise the level from an even lower base. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's going to be difficult. It's, I mean, they've got they've got some good players. You know, I'm just hoping that the early Champions League exit doesn't put a lot of these other players off and they want to leave again or, or stop other players coming to join them. Yeah. You know? Um, but they've showed, they showed yeah. in the first two games in, in Greece that they, you know, I mean, we, we I literally knew nothing about the two teams they played in the first um, first two games, Well, you were the same. But, this, you know, they, they played really well, you know, 4-0 in the first game. And comfortably won the second game, so you know it, that was two unknowns. But they still put them to the sword, so you know it could have e- they could have easily went there and and lost either game because we didn't know much about them. But you know they went away from home and got two away wins. So you know, it, as you say, it's it's just going to take time. You know, Benfica obviously are a, a, a very good outfit, and you know I was looking at some of the other ties in the qualifiers and. You know, we've, we've we've hit one of the big ones. You know, we, obviously we could have hit Arsenal as well, but you know, we've hit one of the big ones in Benfica. It's just a shame, but all credit to them. Yeah, well, well, I, well, I did a lucky with the fact that we got Benfica. I mean, we said that we said that last week because I mean, looking at some of the other teams that you know that that were in it because the way the way they've done the qualification, I think it was only four teams went into the group stages as of right, and the rest of them all had to qualify, which I thought was a bit a bit odd, even for, even for uh, for UEFA, but. Um, I mean, I don't even know how did Arsenal go on tonight. I'm trying to find it here. How did they I'm go on tonight? I'm, I'm on my phone, so I don't know. Um, no, uh, I, don't, I don't. Arsenal won one nothing, and, and I actually they went through three two. And I, okay. get... I don't think so, there is but... another level CGM. I think that's just no, basically. No, there isn't. That's it. it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But that, not a UEFA I think cup. That, I think I think that will come. I think that will evolve. You know, I think mm, that will I think evolve. Will. Yeah, I think it will. Um, it's it is a because I, I do think if they did drop into, say, the UEFA Cup or the Europa League sort of style sort of level, I think they could actually do quite well in that. Because um, obviously the 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 more established teams and the bigger teams are obviously going to be in the Champions League. And, it, you know, you'd probably be playing against sort of similar level teams in that sort of Europa League style level, as CGM sort of puts it. So I think we'd do quite well in that. But it's just a shame that they came up against a Benfica team like that. Because I, I think... Quite early on in the first leg, Wolf, we kind of looked at each other and we're like, "This team's good." Yeah, I thought that. I mean, just looking at some of the teams that went through tonight: Juventus, Juventus women, Real Madrid women, um, PSG's women, Arsenal's women. You know, Rose, oh, Rosengard, Rosengard, who don't really mean much in the the men's game, but they're a, they're a, they're a fairly well established European team in the women's game. Slavia Prague. There's a lot of decent teams here, so to even be in that sort of company, you know, in our first season in the Champions League. Um, it's no, it's no mean achievement. You know they did well. I'm, I mean, hope, hopefully going forward for me, because there's a a World Cup break coming up. I'd like to think that some of the ladies' games will get played at Ibrox. Well, you know? I did, I did listen to the Fiona McIntyre when they they were mentioning obviously this TV deal that's included the ladies, and she did say that they've been very strategic in when they they've picked games when the World Cup's on that they're going to try and. You know, put some of the bigger games on in the in the World Cup sort of when the men's World Cups on. So um, it'd be a good chance for some of the, the fans to go along and watch the you know the, the, the ladies team because I, I would imagine that they'll be playing Glasgow City and Celtic in that sort of period of yeah. time. So I well, would the like to you've got, the thing. The problem you've got there is we've, we've obviously signed a contract with Broadwood and said we've used yeah. Broadwood, so we're not going to pay for a round for a game that we're, we're playing a game somewhere else. So I don't know how mm-hmm. I don't know how that would work. Mm-hmm. You know, but well, what's Broadwood? Seven thousand? Ten, I think. Ten? Even if you filled that, that would be brilliant. But yeah, but the thing is to get more people enticed to go to the game. You know, a lot of people will take their kids. For me, a lot of people will take their kids along to the game. First yeah. time at Ibrox. You know what I mean? It's not really exciting saying your kids come on, we'll go watch Rangers your first time at Broadwood. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's not really not really that enticing because it's it's just no. chalk and cheese, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like yeah. one will take you to Glasgow, and one will take you to Forest, you know what I mean? Which one would you yeah. like? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
you know? But I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it, they, might, they might throw in a, a curveball, and I think I've got Celtic at home in November, so they might, they might yeah, try and. Sure well. say, yeah. yeah, I might. They might. They might throw a curveball and say, "Look, we'll play yeah. this game at Ibrox." You never know. I like to think so because I mean that would certainly get a crowd in, you know, especially mm. during the, especially during the World Cup because I know a lot of people are. Unlike me, a lot of people are kind of are looking forward to the World Cup quite late international stuff. But the chance to watch Rangers play in, play Celtic at, at anything at Ibrox, mm-hmm. but that that would definitely get a crowd in. You know, I mean they Absolutely. got a decent crowd when they played Aberdeen last year. You know, mm-hmm. but again the problem then was we were only we were using the training centre. We, we didn't have a contract with another stadium, so yeah. don't know how that. But we'll find out. That that I'm sure that'll come out in the in the wash. Yeah, you know? definitely. Um, but to pick up on Gallant Pioneer's point, which I know you can't see because you're on your phone and your eyes oh, no, I, great. I can see it, I can see and it. You need that, all right. VAR yeah. should be in games 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I mean, you wait, you wait for us trying to push the women's game. They're making a big thing of it, you know. These games are, these games are live on, well, that one was on BBC Album, but they're on they're on YouTube, they're on UEFA's website, they're on all these places. And they, yeah. don't, have, they don't have VAR. You know what I mean? If they're, I mean, I don't know if they've got it in the group stages of that. The Women's Champions League, but the VA we at least get the penalties. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If, if we score the one that we're given with two minutes to go, yeah, definitely. You know, Cause, but, just because you've got it doesn't mean you'll score it. But no, very true. But as you say, at, at Champions League level, certainly in the ladies' game, you would expect, um, you know, they, you know, they're trying to promote, as you say, and they're trying to big it up, and then they don't have VAR. It's kind of well, come on, guys, you know, you're trying to promote this game and you're not sort of promoting it fully, if you know what I mean. But having said that, I think with VAR tonight, we might not even have got as far as the extra time because there's a couple of very, very iffy offside decisions given in their favour tonight. Yeah. I'm not, not convinced. I'm, I'm per- personally not convinced. So it's it swings and roundabouts. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, even even towards, you know, when, when the, I mean, as you, as you said in the, 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 the sort of pre-pod, I mean, that then that Benfica girl should never have been sent off, but she was, and they completely lost the tatty, you yeah. know, right after that. And there was a right chance for us to really squeeze them and push a goal, but just. Oh, I mean, I, I think she should have been sent off because of her reaction to the yellow card, because you can't react yeah. like that. You've just got. I don't think she should have been booked, and I understand why she was annoyed, but she should be professional enough to say, "Okay, let's need to let that go. Talk about it later." Yeah. You know what I mean? Because she could yeah. have cost her team. In the end, she didn't, Absolutely. but she could have. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, um, a comment here from 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 Darren um, about Sa- about Sam Kerr. Because there was an earlier comment saying it's the first time that they've ever seen Sam Kerr angry. I have to say it's the first time I've ever seen her angry, and I thought she was lucky to stay on. Yeah. Particularly when she made that challenge a couple of minutes after she got booked. I thought, oh she yeah, level this up. But yeah. I mean, that's for me. That's a good thing with the ladies' team. I mean, Sam Sam Kerr's on record as being a Rangers fan. She loves it. Right. Mm-hmm. Nick Docker is the same, you know. Uh, Jane Ross. Kath, Kath Hill's the same. Jane Ross is the same. Kirsty Howard, you know. You know Kirsty, oh, Kirsty's, uh, Kirsty, you know what I mean? So, yeah. almost, almost half, half of the team, you know, unlike us, they're just, they're just, they're just fans like us. And that's, and you're, you're not going to get that in the men's game with it, with the way we've got, and the, and the ladies' team's going to fall away from that as Possibly. we progress. And mm-hmm. we, we, we sign more, more players like. Like uh, Dana Oshman and you know foreign players like that because they've, they're not going to come here and say yeah, I'm a Rangers fan because they're not going to be. No. And if we want to progress, we need to get. But you still need to keep that at the club, and it's great to see. You know, I mean, I've obviously we've, we've both followed the ladies team for a number of years, and we've seen Sam, we've seen Sam Kerr's progression. When Sam first came into the team, I didn't really rate her. I thought, nah, not really for me. But I think she's, she's turned into a terrific player. You know, she's yep. turned into an absolutely terrific player. Absolutely. She's she's the only one really you can benchmark that because we brought obviously we brought Kirsty Howitt in, uh, we brought Jane Ross in, we brought Nick Dock in, you know, we brought brought Kathy Hill in, you know what I mean? Although yeah. they're, they're Rangers fans, they've been they've been as well. Sam's kind of come, come through the come through the system and she's you know, she absolutely loves it. Terrific player. And there is a lot of good players coming through. I mean, look at look at the young players tonight, the experience that they got. Yep, you know, Kirsty Kirsty McLean starts the game, plays an hour. Okay, yeah. the game, the first ever passed the midfield by, but what an experience for her. Absolutely. Then, you know, Emma Watson comes on, scores scores a Champions League goal. What, she's 17 years old, scoring goals in the Champions League. You know what I mean? Jodie McCleary comes on and she's giving the referee a hard time in extra time. Yeah. You know, so they're was, not even, they're not shying away. You know what I mean? No, and she, even Jodie was getting stuck in in that melee with, 
uh, Sam Kerr and that other player. So, I think you I think you noticed she, that she had a wee dig at somebody. So you know oh, what I mean. No. But, you know, cause she looked she looked a bit when it kicked when when you when they zoomed in on she she looked a bit sort of startled. Mm-hmm. And then she just got up and got on with it. You know what I mean? It was yeah. and she was giving the referee a right hard time at one point. So it's good to see these young these young uh, girls coming through. It's a great great a great marker. Absolutely. You know, for going going forward because they're there. The problem we're going to have is keeping them. To be honest, this is it. You know, this is it. The English the English teams are going to swallow them up eventually. Because I mean, we, as we always say with it, with the men's first team, for the for the transfer system to work, you need to have somebody away and have a success. And we've got that now. Nathan Patterson is getting success at Everton, so it's proved that, that they can they can come through an academy and be a success. Calvin Bass is a success at Ajax, so again, they can come from Rangers. But but we've got. The women's team I've got from even before they went professional, mm-hmm. because we've got um, my name's just gone right out of my head at like Chelsea. Corner. What's her name? She's got gone right out of my head. Oh, oh uh, Cuthbert. Erin Cuthbert, who left, who left us when we were only when we were only fiddling about a bit of women's team. We weren't really doing anything too serious with it. And mm-hmm. Erin's come on. Erin left with us when she was at seventeen or eighteen, and she's come on leaps and bounds at, at, at Chelsea. So we've got that even from before we were professional. So being able to keep keep these girls is yeah. going to be difficult. You know what I mean? She's a starter for Chelsea. I know. Right? Yeah, and she's, she's a regular for Scotland as well. And she's a fantastic yeah. player. She really is. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And she used to follow me, and she used to follow me on Twitter, which I'm quite proud of. Her. She doesn't anymore, I don't think. But she used to, which I'm quite proud of. Her. <laughs> so. But no, I mean. Just to cap it off, Wolf, I mean, it's it's been a, a great journey for the girls being away from home, uh, different countries, uh, experiencing, you know, what the men's team have experienced over the last few years. And for me, once they get a taste of it, they'll just want more. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully hopefully, this is the, this is the spark that they can just go on and, you know, win, win this league win this league again. You know, get that done. Hopefully yeah. put a cup alongside it because it's I'm still, it still rankles me that we didn't win any of the Cups last year. Yeah, even more so because who who we lost who we lost out to in both of them, <laughs> yeah. you know, because um, we had that we had that thing that we've always the, the, the women have stru- the, they've struggled against yes. Glasgow City and Celtic and they knocked that on the head last season. Mm-hmm. Played Celtic two cup ties and didn't turn up on either of them. No. You know that still rankles with me, but yeah. hopefully they can hopefully they can turn that round. Um, well, I mean, but no, I think, I think the big know? thing now that uh, Celtic and Glasgow City are going to find out is that uh, Glasgow, uh, Celtic certainly lost their top scorer from last year and then I think their Glasgow's top player just retired the other day so they're they're going to have a, a bit of a, a change in sort of personnel because that's two big players for that teams and yeah. you know it's that's going to hurt them a lot because they were very influential weren't they yeah indeed yeah but uh, as, as Donald Grant says in the comments who cares who really cares about them to yeah. be honest um, yeah, I mean, hope, hope, hopefully they're in our slipstream you know yeah, um, the important things you want in the title and getting back into the Champions League next season. Um, it would be nice to put a couple along. Nice to put a couple alongside it. If we do, we do. If we don't, we don't. Absolutely, but I, I just hope that the experiences that we've had in Greece and tonight in Benfica that they've, they've had a, a, a little taste of it and they just want more. Yeah, absolutely. It was also nice to see a few Rangers fans in the crowd tonight. There was one or two. Uh, Not, there wasn't a lot, but there was one or two there. Mm-hmm. Um, Surprised you weren't there, Wolf. I've run out of holidays, mate. <laughs> For, that's, I mean, but the because my holidays work January to December, so we had all the they're, they're on to Seville and then the qualifiers this year. And I've actually I've actually had to pull in a favour to get Tuesday off to go to Liverpool, but it's fine. I've, ma- I've managed it, so so we're all, so we're all, we're all good. So yeah, it, it would have been nice for them to go through and actually get a wee, a wee trip with them at some point, but that'll yeah. come. That'll come. I think it will. Yeah, definitely. And I'm just I'm just chuffed for them that they've competed. Um, narrow losing at home and yeah it was 3-1 tonight but I don't think it was yeah oh, I, I know I'm contradicting myself it was probably three as you said was, they could have been 3 or 4 nil up in the half, first half but they weren't yeah and well, we, we said at no, the end of the game last week that this week they probably go to Portugal and only get hammered because they looked like they had a lot a lot left in reserve mm-hmm. and we, yeah. we dug in we took them we took them to let's not forget that we've played three we've played three European games away from home and won them all because mm-hmm. we won that game, although we lost the tie, ultimately. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. So that's that's not a lot of Rangers teams will do that. No, you know I mean? not at all. I know, I know it's all about I know it's all about winning the tie, but let's take let's try and accentuate the positives. You know what I mean? Let's take, let's take any positive you can get. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Yep. Anyway, on that note, folks, it's, thanks for the, all the comments. Great to see so many people watching. I mean, you know, it was a, it was a spur of the moment. I said earlier on, can we can we do this? Um, Brian's, I'm guessing he's sitting in a hotel room. What looks like a hotel room? Yeah. Uh, in, in Glasgow for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I'm lying here with my, my dog snoring behind me, so I'm sitting here with my dog snoring behind me. So I think I, that, that's a hint to get off the podcast and get some sleep. So thanks very much, everybody, <laughs> in, the, everybody in the comments. Um, the Rabble will be back on Friday night, I believe. We've got a show on Friday night. Um, we a phone in on Friday as well. Phone in, yeah. half, half past seven. So yeah. if you're about on Friday night, tune into that. You won't hear my dulcet tones. I'm elsewhere doing other things. <laughs> um, don't know. Are you on a Friday, Brian? No, not this Friday. No, I'm working. So, um, but well, there just you go. You get some. Pro- you'll get some proper poilers on Friday. So. <laughs> but um, just to say as well that well, the Robles hopefully going to be covering a few of the ladies' games this season. Um, hopefully, when the World Cup's on, that we'll we'll get to a few games and we'll keep a bit of Rangers interest while the World Cup's on at least. So, we'll we'll try and do that. What we will. We will, and I've just noticed that I had a, a black background for the whole way through this. I've just put the rabble one back up, so I'm <laughs> not used to this hosting lark, so I'm pressing buttons that I don't know what I'm doing with. But yeah, hopefully we'll be, we're gonna, well, I'm certainly going to plan on getting to as many ladies and B-team games as I can during the World Cup break, because yeah, obviously living, living where I live, it's not particularly easy to go up down the road all the time. But I would be for the first team we're playing, so I'm going to do it if the ladies or the, or the B-team are playing, depending on where the games are, so yeah. Yeah. absolutely looking forward to that so hopefully yeah, we can absolutely. get a bit more coverage and um, with the support of the guys up on here we can maybe get a bit more gantry work as well which would be which would be quite nice it's quite nice watching it from up there yeah um, but as i say folks thanks very much for uh, for tuning in sorry we've not got better news to to give you but i thought the girls did really really well it's never good to see a rangers team get knocked out of a tournament yeah. but they didn't let they didn't let themselves they didn't let the clubs down yeah. um and the say the Rabble's back on Friday. We'll be back with you sometime in the very near future. So thank you very much and good night. Cheers. Thanks, guys. That's fine.